start off with Falk Elementary and this student and um, Panther of the Month is Lance Goff. Lance is the son of Edward Goff and Sandra Hefferman. He is a pre-kinder gardener at Falk Elementary Childhood. In his spare time Lance enjoys going outside. He likes to play hide and seek with his brother Alex and sister Kaylee. He likes to go to school because he gets to play on the iPad. His favorite color is red. <laughs> And when Lance grows up, he wants to be a firefighter. He was nominated by the teachers because he follows the rules and tries his best when doing his work. He's a good helper to his classmates and his teacher. Bach Elementary Childhood is proud to have Lance Goff as their Panther of the Month. <laughs> the next student is Keyberger from Keyberger Elementary is Yarisley Ramirez. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and read your Risley's log here is that she's the daughter of Arlette Ramirez and Sa Juanita Elizondo. She's a second grader at Keyberg Elementary and in her spare time she enjoys collecting coins and watching their baby chicks. She has one brother and one sister. She likes school because she loves learning math. She wants to be a doctor when she grows up and she was selected Panther of the Month because she is a dedicated student respectful, hardworking, a leader, responsible, caring, and friendly. She was nominated by the teachers of the Keyberger Elementary. Congratulations. congratulations. <laughs> Going on to Charlie Marshall Elementary and Tyler Stoops. Tyler is not here either. Well, this is odd. Usually that happens. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and read his little bio also. Tyler is November Panther of the Month for Charlie Marshall Elementary. He's a fifth grader. He is respectful and always puts others first. He's very proud of his hard work and dedication. Tyler is a son of Mr. <coughs> and Mrs. Brandon Stoops. He has two brothers. He currently has two dogs as pets. His favorite hobbies are art and playing video games. Favorite color is blue and favorite subject is science. He hopes to become a professional artist when he grows up. Tyler is Charlie Marshall's November Panther of the Month. Congratulations. That's your guy, A.C. Blunt, James Richardson. Come on down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jamie Richardson, the brother of Emmett, and has a Becca, the 17-year-old, Justin, 16-year-old, and Landon, 19-year-old. He's a sixth grader at A.C. Blunt Middle School. In his spare time, he enjoys playing basketball, video games, and reading. He has two cats, Simba and Toes, and one dog named Hank. His favorite subject is social studies because he really enjoys learning about history. 
After college, James wants to be a marine biologist or mechanic. The APHS is Linda Garcia here. Laura Garcia. She has four brothers, Damian, Andy, Jesse, and Juan. Linda is currently a sophomore and is involved in MJROTC. She enjoys education and re she, she is receiving from her teachers and loves to read and learn about history. After she graduates from high school, she plans to attend college and learn about technology engineering. She was nominated as Panther of the Month because she is because of her desirable qualities, being polite, good citizen, willingness to help others, and kind, as well as sympathy to others. Aransas Pass High School teachers and staff would like to congratulate Linda for her outstanding work. Charlie Marshall, he's always very respectful and always puts others first. 
We are proud of his hard work and dedication. He is the son and daughter, I'm sorry, he is the son of Mr. and Mrs. Brandon Stoops. He has two brothers. He is currently has two dogs as pets. His favorite hobbies are art and playing video games. Favorite color is blue, and his favorite subject is school and science. He hopes to become a professional artist when he grows up. Please congratulate Tyler Stoops as a member. Good evening. Good evening. I'm assuming y'all can kind of follow along here. I'm not okay. okay the, the audit's about 75 pages, so I mean, I won't go over the whole thing, but uh, page two is the opinion, and it's, a, it's called an unmodified or clean opinion on the financial statements, which is what you want. Statements are fairly presented in accordance with that. Uh, Generally accepted accounting principles. And on, on page, uh, let's try to get some of the highlights. Uh, on page uh, 15 is the, is the uh, uh, financial statement of the general fund. And at the end of the year, uh, we had about seven million six in, in uh, cash and investments. There were some liabilities of about 961000 
and uh, it had a fund balance of seven million more. So the district, the district is in, in good financial condition at the end of the year. That's your that's your ninth fund. And then on, on page 17 is an operating statement. And uh, if you look down from the third line from the bottom, you added 415,000 to your fund balance for the year. So uh, the district is in good financial condition. Uh, beginning on page 23, I won't go over all these, 24 rather, there's the notes to the financials. It just describes uh, the accounting policies and things that fund uh, companies that rate your bond want to see. There's uh, things on your debt and your assets. Uh, and then on, on page uh, uh, 47, I'd just like to point out the debt service fund. You had a, a fund balance of 440, almost 45,000 at the end of the year, so it's in good shape also. So all your all your funds are in good are in a good financial condition. Most of the rest of these are just federal funds that you're reimbursed as you spend the money, and there's not really a significant fund balance other than the cafeteria and. Uh, and it had a fund balance of about three hundred thousand at the end of the year. So they're, all, I'd say they're all in, they're all in uh, good shape. Uh, we had we had to issue uh, some reports on your internal control and compliance for the grant for your granting agencies and TEA, and those are on page sixty four and sixty six. And uh, there's a lot of verbiage, but basically it says that. We didn't find any material weaknesses in internal control or any items of non-compliance. So that, those are clean reports on all your all your uh, federal programs. And then on page 71 and 72 is a listing of all your the federal money you got for the year, which totaled about two million three. There's a lot, you know, there's a lot more numbers in here. I'll be, I'll be glad to try to answer any questions if you have any, or go over anything you would like me to, like me to go over. But the books were in good condition. Uh, we didn't have any problems uh, during audit. Everything went real smooth, and uh, the district funds are in good financial condition. So I mean, everything, everything looked real good. Kudos. Questions after you look over for some more, just feel free to call me. I'll be glad to go over with you anytime. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. item, an update from campus administration regarding bullying prevention programs for each campus. Good evening. I just wanted to give a brief update on bullying prevention for all campuses this evening. 
Um, of course, we all as principals have a flow chart to determine whether um, written, verbal, electronic, or physical conduct can be considered as bullying according to the Texas Education Code 37.0832. Um, and then some of the um, measures that we are um, being proactive with are as follows. On January 13th, we are going to have a gentleman by the name of Melvin Adams coming to our district. He's a former um, Harlem Globetrotter. Since retiring from the Globetrotters in 2000, he's spoken to two million youth. Um, he grew up in the ghetto of Houston and overcame incredible negative circumstances in his life to achieve the dream of playing professional basketball. He's been called um, the one of the most dynamic youth speakers in the country. So. <clears throat> We're anticipating his arrival and excited to have him in our district. And of course, the message that he'll be bringing to our youth is um, about bullying and then drugs as well. Um, he'll be coming to three of our campuses and I invite each one of you to be at one or all if you can be. And as we get closer, it'll be on the weekly agenda that we send out to you. Um, but Charlie Marshall will have him on the 13th at 8.30. The high school, he'll be there at 10.15 and at one o'clock at the middle school. So we're looking forward to, to having him here and the message that he's going to bring for our older kids. Um, Key Berger is doing some presentations that are done by the counselor Sue Wood out of the book How to Stop Bullying and Social Aggression. Um, they're meeting once a month during PE and of course those lessons are geared for second and third graders. <clears throat> they are recognizing bullying, understanding the definition of bullying, what it is. They're talking about respect, disrespect being an upstander instead of a bystander. Um, and then a letter goes home after each one of those presentations just to inform the parents of what they've learned and to en encourage them to ask their student about the lesson. And of course, there's a number for them to call the counselor if they have questions as well. Um, I briefly spoke last time in the meeting about the Early Act First Night. They have a component to the program for bullying as well. The Aramis Pass Police Department has um, verbally committed to funding that piece of the program for Charlie Marshall and Keyberger. <clears throat> um, and basically it's gonna be three targeted groups and one of them being the entire student body, the other ones um, specifically de designed for certain students on our campuses. Those groups will be fluid because we'll meet three times. We're gonna do it January, February, and um, I believe April because of testing. So, <clears throat> three times, again, for Charlie Marshall and Keyberger. Um, and then last but not least, on our website, we also have a link on the right side of the page at the bottom. There's a link to the Aransas Pass Police Department. And uh, you can click on that and for students' use or parental use where they can um, tell of it, a situation or something that has happened and it goes directly to our SRO so that they can be notified of any um, situations that they need to be notified for bullying as well. Um, so these are some of the proactive things that we're doing and of course our district is um, certainly wanting to be a safe place and enhance a, an environment that cultivates learning and so um, we're hoping that these things enhance that and keep us safe where our kids are, are excited to be at school to learn <coughs> and that these types of behaviors don't hinder them from wanting to be already been in, they've been in place? Um, or are we just starting all of this? Is that Some of it has already taken place this year. I forgot to even say at Keyberger, they're partnering with HEB and they've already been out. The HEB buddy has also been out to uh, do a story that targets bullying and that happened in November. <clears throat> and it's on the calendar for January as well. The early act first night, of course, has been in place. Um, but we're just implementing the bullying aspect of it. And you, you mentioned being able to track them by the way you code or the disciplinary yes. action. Are we yes. all on the same page on, I know there's a, an actual mandated statement of what's considered bullying, but how we coded apparently was getting lost in our tracking. And it, it, it just got a zero or nothing and no one put it in a place. Right. And we really couldn't say, are we all on the, we as, as far as the principals all on the same place? 
on what you're going to put in that. I believe so. so and we can track that's it following that Texas Education mm -hmm. Code of the definition of what it is and if it fits that, then yes. We so we will be able to see if there's a decrease in the that behavior pattern yes, by the end of the year, maybe. Okay. Thank you. Are y'all going to evaluate these programs like? after the, the gentleman comes from the Harlem Go Trider, just to see the input of the students really, just an evaluation, not all of them, not every hundred, but randomly give them a paper to fill out maybe and just get some feedback whether they thought it was worth That's a great idea. Yeah, okay. That's time and money, it, you know? And if so, yeah. we could keep throwing money at something that they may have paid attention to before. Absolutely. Otherwise, no value. Let's quit wasting our time. But I have heard of that gentleman. I've heard he's very dynamic, so. Hopefully they'll engage in, in that concept. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. At the principals' meetings, do we review the the disciplinary reports and kind of talk about the different things yeah, that are going on in <coughs> that, campuses? That, yeah, the high school had their the gentleman coming prior to the discussion of bullying at the last meeting. So that was that was Miss Miss King too. Found this guy, found this gentleman, on her, and we had that. She was in the process of getting in touch with him okay. when this came up, so just added, you know, another measure. Exactly. Now we do talk about enforcement uh, of campus policies and discipline. Uh, we should be on the same page with that issue. So it, it is a, a topic of discussion. Not at every meeting, but yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you all very Thank much. You. It's very important, I think, for our kids to feel safe and not not have to be harassed, no matter what level they're at. So if we can contribute to that in any way, I think it's important. I know you have a thousand other things to do, but I think that might be one of them. I know it should start at home, but we have to take some, some things and carry the torch. So I appreciate the effort. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is an information item. It's the board members. Um, education hours. The State Board of Education rules require in 19 tax section 61.1 J that the current president of each local board of trustees shall announce the name of each board member who has completed the required continuing education hours. Anyone who has exceeded the, re the required hours of continuing education and who is deficient in the required continuing education. Should any board members be deficient in their hours, the president will recommend they continue to receive their hours of continuing education. The president shall cause the minutes of the local board to reflect the information and shall make this information available to the local media. We were provided a summary of the board's hours. Rudy Abrego, 12 hours. Patricia Branch, 8 hours. Del Diosis, 8.5. Veronica Johnson, 6.5. John Molinax gets the gold star, 25. <laughs> David Rector, 7.5. Terry Stansberry, 2. And we annually go to the TASB convention and we enjoy ourselves and we learn and we bond and it's, it's always um, very enlightening and educational for us. So we, we enjoy that. The next item on the agenda is an action item. Information for nominating a representative for the Nueces County Appraisal District Board of Directors was provided for the board. The nominees are Leo Gonzalez and Gabrielle Hillpole. Leo is from Toloso Midway ISD and Gabrielle is from Flower Bluff ISD. Do I have any nomination? We have 10 votes, and then we just split the votes. Unless somebody knows anything. Yeah, unless we have any other input from board members. Yeah. Yeah. on the agenda is the student welfare and wellness program. Uh, what you have before you basically is a um, uh, policy replacement involving um, a wellness program. 
the old policy wasn't as descriptive as far as our wellness program that uh, Ms. Linnell uh, has created basically through the laws of Texas. Uh, so therefore, we're swapping out the old policy, implementing a more descriptive policy, and also we're talking about smart snacks. So, um, and these are snacks that can be sold during the school day, but not to interfere with uh, the cafeteria sales. So, I think the last part about that is just how we communicate the, the new wellness program policy uh, to the community. So, is this in, in agreement with all of this, the shack? advisory council so we still have that council which is made up of students parents or parents and community members that is correct do you yes. want some more? Uh, four times four years four four time 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 time. so these healthy snacks where are they sold out of the cafeteria that they can do um we sell some of them out of the cafeteria but what i have done for um basically the elementary schools for um, um, to make money. Um, I have found the snacks that meet the smart snacks and put them in a calculator to make sure that they meet and then I've given them a list to like Key Burger and Bob and, and Marshall and um, they sell them mostly on Friday afternoons um, to the students and um, and they, it's okay because they've been already approved as a smart snack food. So, so they can pickle and popcorn, they, they get yes, options. Yes, yes. Well, our, yes, our popcorn <clears throat> kind of went by the wayside, the ones that we were doing because of the oil. It was in it, it wasn't it was very healthy. <laughs> so, Don't say that, I love my cheese I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, we'll always eat my popcorn. I know, so all that good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but, they have, but they have a whole list of that, that I have approved, and okay. they're uh, purchasing from us through catering, and, and they're selling them. And they're, I think they're making big money at it. So I think they're enjoying not having to prepare all the popcorn and bag it and do all that kind of That's stuff awesome. and just have the smart snacks that they're selling. To them, so. And it goes into just the campus little fun to buy activity, okay, to do activities and fun things. Any other questions? The next item on the agenda is an action item. I'm sorry, did we put an action? I'm sorry. Do I have a motion to approve? Make a motion to approve the post office. Motion by Mr. Baldex. Second. Second by Ms. French. Any opposed? about enforcement, we want to be on the same page. Uh, I did receive some uh, uh, results back. Uh, I think that's doable. Uh, we can move forward. I think we'll get on the same page first thing in the morning uh, to nail down the enforcement, take every consideration, uh, all your replies into consideration, and we'll move it down. Uh, but I'm asking that we approve it tonight to so move forward uh, for Wednesday. Two weeks ago, and now 
uh, okay, it was in dress code, now all of a sudden it's out of dress code. Uh, but it doesn't have to be the policy, we just want to know about enforcement. So when do we start? Do we start Wednesday? Do we start at the end of the school year? Do we, uh, and we're talking about the shirts already purchased. That's what we're talking about. The shirts are already purchased. So some have the neon greens already that were in dress code now, but perhaps Wednesday will not be in dress code. So how do we handle that? So that, that was the basis of uh, reaching out to you all to give you input back on how do we cover that. Was there a consensus though, or we don't know where You know what, I'll let them, I'll let, was there a cons does anyone want to stand up and before? As far as the, uh, when to stop and when to start? Uh, it would almost, I mean, it, it would almost have to go to the end of the year with what they've already purchased. And in that way, we, you know, on that aspect, we can just say, you know, at, at the 2017-18 school year, this is the dress, these are the colors we we're going with yeah. uh, forward. I mean, that's really about the only Yeah, they've already bought. Yeah. You know, I think you have to be reasonable about what we're expecting from the administrators um, to enforce you know, because we are at semester already. So, and, and, and that's why we have our administrators on campus to use their judgment and to enforce these policies the best they can. So again, we'll get on the same page first thing in the morning. Uh, and we'll probably roll it out on Wednesday. <coughs> the other concern was the uh, Booster Club uh, product that's still uh, perhaps not in dress code. Uh, and what do we do with that inventory? Uh, do we allow them to sell it? Or do we say uh, hold on it? Uh, but we have agreed that any new group or organization coming forward to purchase spirit shirts will be one of these five colors. Right. So that will start immediately. We're just concerned about the shirts that were purchased for this. Now, do we have anything in the dress code as far as the lettering and trim? Or, you know, can have black shirts with pink lettering? Or, I mean, no, I think that's part of the enforcement. Because here's the deal. If it's an old <coughs> shirt, see, that's what we're talking about. Do, do, they, do we allow them to wear it? But the, all new shirts won't meet that guideline. They will fall into the policy that we have right now. So the chest cuff coming in, coming in can't have a bright green shirt because all shirts have to be approved by campus. I just remember we, we went through the same thing about five years ago. Mm -hmm. And, and we we're, we're readdressing the same thing all over again. So, I, you know, it's just, you know, like we're just going around in a circle and right back when we started five years ago with the same problem. You know, I, I don't know how we got here, but, you know, it just, you know, you know so I think just administrators need to make sure that they enforce what the dress code is and the clubs understand that. And if you order something, they're not going to be able to sell them. So. Yes, yeah, I think we have become a little lenient and, and, and needed to. If, if it was heard that, you know, this is impossible pretty much to reinforce the tucking of the shirts and the saggy back. You know, the styles have changed and, and so did our policy. And I think this is pretty generous if we can just stay diligent and making sure they don't go crazy with it. I, I, I do we want to really put the Spirit Club out of, you know, all these shirts that they bought because we yeah. just changed the policy? Yeah, that's not something. No, that's not our intention, so um, mm -hmm. I'd like to see this to next year, but okay. at least we've addressed it and adopted it, and we, we, we left it open a little bit more for you for the, for the rest of the year, since the spirit shirts might be a more large advantage. Yeah. as much spirit as possible. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> okay. Do I have a motion to approve the dress code for the 2016-2017 I'll make motion by Mr. Director. Second. Second by Mrs. Branch. Any opposed? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. The next item on the agenda is information <coughs> is included concerning the retainer program for Walsh Gallegos. This is a yearly, yearly event. <laughs> Uh, again, it's, it's uh, yearly. Uh, they always like a thousand dollar retainer for some reason. Although we we always use more than that, but uh, yeah, it's fun. And the thousand dollars includes uh, no charge telephone consultations, reduced rates for legal work, 
reduce fees for in services, reduce rates for practical Wash Gallegos products, a free subscription to buy monthly general education newsletter, and a free subscription to monthly special education newsletter. Email updates and the latest developments in the education law. Do I have a motion to approve the Wash Gallegos retainer? I make a motion to approve the retainer program for Wash Gallegos. Motion by Mr. Mullinex. Second by Ms. Diosis. All in favor? Aye. All right. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is an information item. This time is set aside for any board member to address any topics for future meetings.